Nikon Coolpix P900 review. The P900 has the same half.3 inch, 16 million pixel sensor as Nikon's slightly cheaper P610 bridge camera. That's the same size sensor as in many compact cameras, and, despite appearances, the P900 is classed as a compact camera because the lens is fixed, not because the camera is small. Even with the 83x zoom retracted, left, the P900 is a big camera, with the lens extended to its maximum, right, it's a monster. The P900 has a fully articulating, 3-inch, 921K dot screen, although Nikon has chosen not to go down the touch-sensitive route. This is complemented by a 921K dot electronic viewfinder which has a eye sensor for activating and deactivating it automatically. Nikon appears keen to include Wi-Fi and NFC in as many of its products as possible, and the P900 is no exception. A free app, available from the Apple and Google Play stores, enables you to remotely control the camera from your smartphone or tablet, or to download images you've already taken. GPS is also built in, for those who like to jaw tag their images. Full manual control is available, along with the range of automatic, semi-automatic, aperture priority and shutter priority, and scene modes. However, Nikon has chosen not to include raw format shooting, which seems a bit remiss for a camera at this price point, and given the intended audience. The P900 can only capture JPEG images, normal or fine quality. To complement its ability to record full HD, 1080p, video, the P900 has a built-in directional microphone which adapts to the zoom setting, however, there's no port for plugging in an external device. You can also create time-lapse movies. The P900 is no lightweight, tipping the scales at a hefty 899 grams, which is about as much as the average DSLR and kit lens, although you get a much more greater zoom range than the average kit lens, of course. Battery life is quoted at around 360 shots, which is reasonable for a compact camera, and should be enough for a day of fairly heavy usage. Focal length can be adjusted via the zoom lever around the shutter release button, or by using the lever on the side of the lens itself. Using the switch on the lens enables you to keep a proper grip the camera with your right hand as you use your left thumb to extend the zoom. Also on the side of the lens is a button which, if you hold it down, causes the lens to zoom out a little to allow you to locate the subject which may have moved out of the shot when you've found the subject. You can release the button and the lens will zoom back into the length it was at before. The P900 screen is fully articulating, which is useful for shooting from awkward angles, and you can fold it away to protect the screen when not in use. The viewfinder, which sits just above the screen, has a sensor which switches the screen off in the viewfinder on when you lift the camera to your eye. It's much easier than having to manually switch the viewfinder on and off, and makes it more likely that you'll actually use the viewfinder. The viewfinder itself is a little smaller than we'd like on a camera of this size, but it's nevertheless useful when you're shooting in bright conditions, or if you prefer not to use the screen. The P900 also performs well at shorter focal lengths. At normal viewing sizes, the overall impression of detail is good throughout the zoom range. If you examine your photos at 100% though, images taken at further reaches of the zoom range are softer than at the wide angle end. It's also worth pointing out that it's only at the very widest focal length can you use the maximum f 2.8 aperture setting, as soon as you zoom a little, the maximum available aperture decreases. The camera's all-purpose metering setting usually produces accurate exposures, but there are times when a little positive exposure compensation will enable you to capture a more balanced exposure, such as when the scene is a little dull or overcast, or if there are large areas of high contrast. The auto-white balance setting performs well, with excellent color rendition even under artificial lighting. Alternatively, there are several white balance presets to choose from, but it's likely you won't need to use them all that often.